Today's video is another bit of an oddball one, involving a brand new RTX graphics card, an old Dell, and a Pentium 4 processor. So recently I was offered an RTX 4060 Ti for review. Unfortunately, I had issues with my original review, lost footage, and a few other problems that made it exceptionally difficult to finish off. So I was looking around for inspiration, because I'll be honest, Palette did send me this graphics card, so I had to offer them something, where eventually I headed up into the loft to see if there was any way I could salvage all this, because it is a really nice little graphics card, and I wanted to do it justice, just in a budget builds kind of way. Right, for this video we're going to need some assistance from a computer that hasn't seen a little bit of use in a while, mostly because it is now stored under a lot of stuff. But we do have the uh, Core 2 Quad PC that has seen an RTX card, but I'm thinking with a little bit of tinkering, uh, we should be able to get a Pentium 4 in this. Uh, I know it's been done before with a little bit of microcode editing in the BIOS, um, that still works. Um, I think we can get a Pentium 4 installed in here. We know it can boot up with RTX graphics cards, but can it handle the latest RTX 4060 Ti? Possibly. There's only one way to find out, and that's involving digging it out through here. I've also just noticed the 25p PC. It's still intact. And it probably still works. Maybe one day we'll have to find out. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. So with that dragged down from the loft, what actually is this new RTX graphics card? Well, thanks to Pallet, they actually sent me an RTX 4060 Ti, which is absolutely overkill for everything we've got planned here today. Featuring 4,353 CUDA cores, 8GB of GDDR6 memory, but a rather small 128-bit bus. Not that it really matters here, I mean, most of these graphics cards seem to come with something like that nowadays, so guess it's not exactly an outlier here, I just, I'm used to seeing bigger buses on uh, cards of this tier, but that's just the way things are now. It's got a relatively slim down design, power consumption figures that I measured put it around 143 watts under peak load, and you know, it's another great design. Pallet, they don't really do wrong here, I mean, they designed Frobot the Robot, and no one else has come up with a mascot that is a frog, that is actually a robot called Frobot. I mean, they've done it again, they've given us a pretty damn good NVIDIA graphics card. At least on paper, that is. But now we need to get back on with the video to actually see, does this stupid idea actually work? Right, so to my knowledge, this is a G33 chipset in this computer. The G33 never officially supported the Pentium 4. However, this PC, being an old Dell, did actually come from the factory with Celeron D chips which are more or less cut down Pentium 4s and therefore terrible. So if we modify the BIOS to take the micro code for a Pentium 4 rather than a Celeron, we should have a somewhat more modern chipset capable of running the RTX graphics card, yet we should have support for Pentium 4 processors. I'm not too sure if I'm going to go for Cedar Mill or Prescott yet. I'm going to see which ones work, and then we should have the first attempt of an RTX 4060 Ti running with a Pentium 4. Now there are motherboards that do officially support the Pentium 4 on the G33 chipset, but these are exceptionally rare. There are a few videos on YouTube showing that it does work, which is kind of what gave me the idea. That and of course, you know, my SD card corruption meant that the official review um, sort of backfired. So we're going down the more fun avenue of trying to see if we can force this to take a Pentium 4 and then force it to boot with an RTX 4060. TI, which should be very fun. Um, so, yeah, let's give it a go. So, the first step was actually finding a modified version of the Dell BIOS, which should actually allow us to start installing a Pentium 4, as it does support the architecture, but it doesn't currently boot when we put a Pentium 4 inside it. So after a great deal of time spent delving down into old forum posts, and we are talking old forum posts here, I finally found a working download link confirmed to work with our good old Dell Inspiron. The next step was painfully, and hopefully, flashing the BIOS into a state where it would work with the Dell and the ancient Pentium 4 we want to put into it. And the good news is, 
that after a few too many boot loops, the machine did actually start with a Pentium 4 inside. No one has ever tried to do this before. You can actually put a Core 2 quad in this machine. Not many of these Dells took Core 2 quads. Most were limited to the Core 2 Duo, and instead we thought, you know what? Why don't we go backwards? So all that's really left to do at this point is combine our RTX powerhouse with this legendarily terrible Pentium 4. What exactly are the specifications of this absolute unit of a PC? Well, we have a Pentium 4 clocking in at just over 3 GHz paired with 6 GB of DDR2 RAM. I did try 8 GB of RAM, but unfortunately that we are already using a setup that shouldn't really work, we're lucky to even get this thing running in the first place, so 6 GB is the maximum I managed to get it working with. On top of that, we have an RTX 4060 Ti, and this is all being powered by a 300 watt Delta power supply, which was fine last year for a Core 2 Quad and an RTX 3050, but we are now using a processor that uses a bit more power, because it's netburst based, and we all know that that is something that exists, and I really wish I could find some redeeming factors, but none are coming to mind, and of course a much more powerful graphics card. Perhaps. I've also got an SSD hooked up to everything to keep things all ticking over smoothly. I didn't realise how cheap these things have got recently. You can literally order 120 gigabytes of SSD storage for about £6 now. Anyway, that, that's besides the point. I am just getting up to date with the whole world of tech again. So I suppose the only thing left to do now is fire this thing up and find out just how well it does in, and it's been a long time since I've said this, the benchmarks. Starting us off with GTA 5, which ran at almost playable levels, probably because we had more VRAM than actual RAM. The game ran smoother with high textures rather than normal ones. Nothing I have ever experienced on a Pentium 4 makes sense like this, but then again, maybe it's because we're using DDR2. Maybe it's because this setup shouldn't exist, I, I don't know. But overall, we saw an average frame rate that mostly hovered around the low 20s. That isn't bad at all. This game usually runs like a slideshow. There were, of course, major stutters, and of course shadows were a no-go, and I don't think GPU utilization ever went over 5%, but GTA 5 now works on a Pentium 4, provided you have an RTX 4060 Ti. That is certainly a revelation of some sort. Now here's a big one. A fully-fledged RTX title here, Red Dead Redemption 2. We had to run this game completely offline, had to use an SSE patch to get the game to launch, but how did it run? Well, we have a new frame rate metric, which is called FPM, frames per minute, of which we got 6 FPMs. And ironically, when some people say that games look like a PowerPoint, a PowerPoint would actually be a better experience than what we're experiencing here. The game was more or less completely unresponsive, it wouldn't close, and the only official way to exit Red Dead Redemption 2 on this setup was to yank the power cable out the back of the computer. But if you ever wanted to see Red Dead Redemption 2 starting, it can do it. Which got me wondering, maybe we could do a Pentium 4 plus Matrox, was it C420? A Matrox Pentium 4 PC could... No, I'm getting carried away there. We'll move on to the next benchmark. Minecraft RTX was woefully unsuccessful. We saw a couple of frames here and there with the game set to the absolute minimum settings possible, but you're really pushing it with anything that isn't at least an older Core 2 Quad or modern Dual Core. Shame really, as I'd hoped we'd just about eke out some playable experience, maybe something slightly, because the Core 2 Quad, that kinda ran it, almost. Fortunately, older versions of Minecraft do work, but we're talking Optifine era Minecraft here with mostly faster settings. I don't think the RTX 4060 uh, Ti used any more power than it did at idle running this, but still, we saw something more than a slideshow as long as we ran an older version of Minecraft. Just no RTX features here, sadly. But most of you are probably thinking there's no way he'll get anything RTX to run. Nothing at all. That's not true. We saw the most success with Quake 2, yes it's a 90s game, running with RTX enabled and a genuinely sort of playable frame rate. There were double digits in there. That's playable. That's what it was, that was what was classed as playable when it came out. 
so I'm just saying that. It was absolutely spectacular. There were, of course, hitches and slowdowns for moments, and occasionally the game could turn to a, a black screen at random intervals, but these aren't really issues to focus on. Just look at that real-time ray tracing. Real-time ray tracing being done with the Pentium 4. It's definitely the Pentium 4 doing that. Definitely not that RTX 4060 Ti that's incredibly actually quite powerful and a little bit impressive compared to what I'm used to, but still, Pentium 4, RTX, double digits. Not too bad. Smaller indie games like Project Zomboid did still work, but were struggling due to the furnace that is the Pentium 4. I really need a, a word count on how many times I said Pentium 4 at this point. But either way, you could see the occasional playable frame rates, but it was rare. Other indie titles like Don't Starve, they will work as long as you run them in netbook mode. But yeah, that's sort of what you're limited to in terms of uh, indie games and modern lightweight games, even with an RTX 4060 Ti. The Pentium 4 really is limited in its processing capabilities, but you can still push it here and there, and the RTX 4060 Ti does let you run higher resolutions than what you'd probably think you'd be able to run. In fact, running at a higher resolution helped take some... I'd say it helped take some load off the Pentium 4, helped balance them a little bit more, leading to a smoother frame rate in those indie titles. So, in some ways, yes, you do see a performance increase using a 4060 Ti, which is something. I did, however, fire up some proper classics, giving us the opportunity to ask, can it run Crisis? And yes, actually, with a mixture of high settings that allowed the RTX graphics card a chance to do... something will go with that, and lower settings to prevent the Pentium exploding or catching fire or doing whatever it is that Pentium 4s do, we saw a decent looking experience that hovered anywhere between 10 to 25 FPS, which is not bad by any means. Last time I tested this I think it was with an X800, and we were lucky to see those kind of frame rates with all low settings. Then of course you've got older titles like Fable, which would of course tend to run with near maxed out settings, giving the RTX card a chance to utilize some of its fancy effects, and letting the Pentium 4 actually run something that wasn't too painful. In other words, if, you, if you're into your 2004-2005 games, you whack an RTX 4060 Ti in there, you're going to be able to max those things out and see at least 30 to 60 FPS, which is pretty playable. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Pretty playable. Now, I don't really have much of a direct comparison, given that I didn't really standardise the testing across these machines. But, as far as these things go, we do have a bit of a comparison with a normal Pentium 4. And, of course, it was the same system, but with a Core 2 Quad, a different RTX graphics card, but still a nice palette RTX one, so there's that. And we're already bottlenecking anyway, so that's gonna help at least standardize them a bit. Overall, from what we can see, there was actually a bit of a performance uplift when using the RTX graphics card and the Pentium 4. That is, of course, compared to the last time I benchmarked one, which was running with an R9 Fury, and similar specifications. I think it was a gigabyte motherboard, but similar amounts of RAM, etc. Still, at the end of the day, the performance increase was noticeable. It was dramatically slower than the newer Core 2 Quad, but when you compare a 2015 flagship like the R9 Fury running with a Pentium 4 to a 2023 mid-range nice performance RTX card with the same Pentium 4, you do get more performance. And that is impressive that we can still push the Pentium 4 further. I didn't think we could do it, but we have. And that's certainly something in 2023. <laughs> That new NVIDIA NVENC, I think it's Revision 8 feature, also works on the card, which is a surreal experience, as this is the latest version of NVENC, and the GPU breaks less sweat encoding files than the Pentium 4 does managing to keep the OBS window running. I did record just a little bit of footage for you, and it was surprisingly usable. That's not to say, if, if you are streaming or recording or making a Let's Play channel, I don't know why you'd be doing that with a Pentium 4, do not go out and buy an RTX graphics card for this. You can, and it will work, and you can record things or stream things, but it's very limiting. Still, the idea that it works is a little bit fascinating. I mean, being able to record decent quality footage with a Pentium 4, even though the Pentium 4 is not really doing much outside opening a window in a program, it's still kind of cool.
So that there about brings us to the end of the Pentium 4 and RTX experience, and I hope you enjoyed the lengths I had to go to in getting this to work. At the end of the day, it would have been easier to just refilm the normal review. I mean, it was a decent card. I actually can't fault it at all, and the palette variant is very good. It didn't overheat, it uses very little power, it's got a very little footprint in your PC. I mean, not every card needs to be massive. These cards don't use loads of power. It doesn't need to take up three slots and have multiple fans. They've done a nice job designing it. It's practical, it's simple, I like it. That's all the graphics card needs to be. But what have we done? We've learnt that it can improve the Pentium 4 experience. And two, we've also learnt how you even begin to get them working together. So a big thank you for Palette for allowing me the chance to make this video. At the end of the day, they have made a very nice card, so if you are in the market for a nice RTX 4060 Ti and Frobot the Robots, glorious creators over at Fro uh, Frobot? Over at Palette, sorry, have only gone and done it again. So thank you very much for watching, and good night.